www.ecoscience.com. So today I've chosen page 63 uh, from the top. And it's uh, when we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer. Being all powerful, he provided what we needed. If we kept him close and performed his work well, established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. As we felt new power flow in, as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, and the hereafter. We were reborn. We were now at step three. Many of us said to our maker as we understood him, God, I offered myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory of them may bear witness to those I would help thy power, thy love, thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Okay. Uh, I'll hand it over to you, Paul. Thanks. You're muted, Paul. You're muted. Uh, good morning, everyone. Paul, thanks for having us. Uh, again, what an exquisite program. Really. To come up with this stuff, I truly believe it was a download. Uh, even the wording of step three of making a decision, you would think they would have just said turning, you know, turn your will and life over to the care of something greater than yourself, but knowing that we were occupied by the problem that we didn't have much say in the matter so we couldn't turn our will and life over to the care of something else we could make a decision and then follow that up with working steps four through nine to initiate the possibility of turning one's will and life over to the care of something greater than ourselves i don't believe we had that ability at that point in our recovery we were completely taken over by something else, a lower power, if you want to call it. So uh, when we sincerely took such a position, hopefully, you know, like they said, we were, we became malleable based on the ass kicking we took. So hopefully that ass kicking will pivot on to sincerely uh, taking a position of that this higher power is going to be the one who's running the show and we're gonna be that which is directed. And again, in the previous paragraph, it has, I to me, the most important non-step, which is first of all, you gotta quit playing God. Yeah, so it didn't work. So next we decided, so that's where the decision lies, yeah? It doesn't say we did it, yeah? It doesn't say next we, we, uh, go, next we were gonna let God was going to be our director. It says yet, next we decided this. So that's the wording of the third step, is making a decision based on uh, your observations of what it was like when you were getting loaded and possibly what it's been like for the last or the first eight weeks of sobriety. So I had come to believe uh, something could restore me to sanity because I hadn't drank in eight weeks, really, or used, and that was a miracle. So I feel step one, they speak about it in the 12 and 12 as a reflection of what it was like before you got sober. And then steps two is reflecting on what it's like when you get sober, which is you come to realize something is doing for you what you can't do for yourself. And then the third decision, the third step is the decision to sincerely take this position of reliance on something greater than self. Yeah. 
And then it follows up with four through nine, which is the working steps that actually that arthritic condition that we're in gets worked on but like by a physical therapist and we get more loose and now we can do something that we couldn't do before, which is turn one's will and life over to the care of a higher power. Because we've been wrestled out of the control of the lower power, hopefully. So, uh, and then it's just beautiful stuff, yeah. We have a new employer which implies there was an old employer. And the new employer being all powerful is going to provide, or he says it in the past tense, he provided what we needed. And we, if we kept close to him, and I don't believe you can be far from everywhere. Yeah. I don't believe if you want to call it a God it's in a certain location <laughs> at a certain time, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, 6668 is the address. I believe it's right where you are at all times. So you've already re fulfilled the one requirement. You can't be far from it. And then it says, uh, if we kept close to him and performed his work well. So what? who's going to say what's performing his work well is? Yeah. That which is playing God will want to do that, but hopefully we've seen that that which is playing God doesn't work and maybe we'll be busy doing service so we won't be listening to that old fucking employer. Yeah, hopefully, and take new suggestions. So he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. And then taking this position with some sincerity, you get established in it quickly, I feel. So established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves. That's the whole point. Yeah. If we could do that ourselves, we would do it. But we can't set out to lose interest in ourself as self. It doesn't work. We have to do some other stuff to lose interest in ourselves. Yes. We can't be the one that's losing interest in ourself. That would be interest in ourself. It just can't, you can't get around that. Yeah. It's one of those mental conundrums that captures us all the time. So let's see here. And it's so beautiful, the words they use because it says, all right, established on such a footing, we become less and less interested in ourselves. And then he says beautifully, our little plans and designs, because obviously when they're yours, they seem to be big plans and designs. So it gets shrunk down in the next sentence. Uh, it's a nice shot of humility, yeah? Our little plans and designs. And then more and more, we become interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. Have you observed this happening? This isn't just theoretical. It's, it's informing you of a process, have you observed it? Have you gone through this process? Yes. Yeah. More and more we become interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. As we felt and are feeling new power flow in, I always like to make the past into the present condition. Yeah. As we enjoyed and are enjoying peace of mind, as we discovered and discovering we could face life successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were reborn. Now this is beautiful also, because it doesn't say we began to lose fear. It, it says we began to lose our fear. So hopefully at this point, hopefully, we start recognizing the fear that we seem to be in isn't ours. Yeah. We're not the cause of it. We're not the promoting of it. Yeah. That something else is putting us in this condition of fear and then reinforcing it with mental anxiety, but it's not ours. Yeah. So we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were, be we were reborn. That's an incredible descriptive paragraph. Yeah. It's mind boggling, really. 
especially if you feel like you've been under this process. It's like someone describing a car wash and you were a car that went through that car wash. There would be an intimacy with the description because you you've been under it. You've been you felt it. You felt the the fucking the brushes whirling. You felt the water. You felt this. Yeah. So it brings about such an intimacy. So we were now at step three, step three. Yeah. Many of us said to our makers, as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou will. That's not a bad attitude. eh? If you're going to have to take a position, that's a good position to be in, I feel. Relieve me of the bondage of self so I can have that beautiful house in Malibu. No, that I may better do thy will. What? Yeah, and maybe the house in Malibu will be thrown in, but it's not the main objective. The main objective is to become of maximum use. What? You mean to others? Yeah, to others maybe. <laughs> So please believe, you know, relieve me of the bondage of self, please, 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 please. Do you get that? That's a beautiful statement because it captures what it's like. It's a bondage of self. Yeah. Hmm. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help with thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Yeah, we thought well before taking this step, making sure we were ready that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him, which is basically jumping into the fourth step. Yeah. Four through nine. And I feel four through nine gives flesh and blood to the decision of the third step. And then you and I get thoroughly convinced based on demonstrations. Yeah. Recovery works. It's not a, it's not a leap of faith. The real reliance on self is a leap of faith constantly. Yeah. What we're brought to is a realization through demonstration that there is a better way. And that better way is trusting the infinite rather than finite self. Now, we don't need to get clear about the infinite because that's impossible. But we can be clear about the finite self. We can. Yeah, we can see that it's not us. (laughs) That's what we can see. Yeah, you're not going to see the infinite. You're looking from the infinite. You're not going to understand the incomprehensible. You're not going to know the unknowable but you can apply that stuff to what you're not. You can. So I feel, and we have the mechanism. When you recognize the seeming culprit, we have the number to call and then get the pest remover over there or whatever, the divine proctologist, whatever, and then to have it relieved and changed by six and seven. We have the way of life, yeah? Now you're awake. And now you become awake to a lot of stuff that you that was going on without us knowing it. Now you start to know it's going on. And when you see it on the stage, you don't start, you don't jump up into the performance. You bring it right to the director, which is the higher power through step six and seven and ask it to be changed, you know, or put to a different use. And then you're basically a witness or a witnessing of the reclamation and the recycling of a life. Yeah. You want to call it yours? It doesn't matter. You see it. You see it in others and you see it in yourself. So it's not your life that's being recycled. It's life is being recycled. It's being reclaimed and put to a different use than it was being used for because there's a new employer. Yeah. Being all powerful, it's going to take care of us. So hopefully, like that thing with the promises. It doesn't say it's going to take away uh, financial insecurity. You're going to lose the fear of financial insecurity. That's really how the program works. 
It doesn't mean everything's gonna get go get great. It could, but you're gonna travel lighter how you know, no matter how anything is. That's where the real value is. It's not a change of you see things differently. Yeah. So it's amazing. I mean, I've read a number of spiritual books, but nothing was as intimate as the description of what I was like and what I'm like now than I find in this book called the big book of AA. It's just unbelievable. It really is. So, and I, I hope, you know, if I had any prayer to suggest to someone new, I would pray for the ability to be convinced so that this position that you're being offered, you sincerely take it and then get established in it. And now you'll be living from a different way or a better way or just, and that way is trusting something infinite that's reliable instead of trusting something finite that's not reliable. And your life is going to show the difference, yeah? Or life will show the difference. Yeah. This painting has been painted for 34 years. It can go on for as long as the body's here. Yeah. Yeah. So the third step, and then again, we're going to start entering the fourth step where I believe there is a very clear description of the exact nature of the wrong, which is uh, self manifesting in various ways is what has defeated us. And to see self as other or as a parasitical movement or as some foreign pathogen, I think works as an imagery. I do. It gives you a possibility that you can be free from it because you see it as other. If you keep looking from it, you can't be free as it from it. You can you can only hope to be free as it. And I think many people have come to such a frustrating point trying to be free as self that they're ready to hear this message, really. Yeah, because this is about freedom. And therefore, many of us set off on a course to be free as self in recovery, and it has failed. Yeah, and we've recognized something through hard earned observation that self is not going to get out of self. Yeah. And that the problem isn't really self, it's the identification as self. I'm taking myself to be the thinker of these insane thoughts. I'm taking myself to be the doer of shit I really had nothing to do with, yeah? If I'm put under a certain condition, there's gonna be a reaction to life from that condition, yeah? You can, I'm accountable for it, but I'm definitely not the one who's responsible for it, yeah? It's just that simple. And I found the difference of seeing it as me and seeing it as other is profound. Yeah. And so we just keep banging away every week because this is fundamental. It's not like oh, tweaking this or changing this a little bit. It's really looking at the beginning where things are conceived and going a different way than the way we're used to going, which is my big plans and designs and my self-interest and all this. Yes? I don't see how you can really double back. If you keep trying to get free as self, uh, it's probably going to be self trying to be free as self. <laughs> it just doesn't, it's not going to work. <laughs> It works by not working, really. It fails you miserably, and that's its value. And maybe, just maybe, you can see you're not that which you want to get out of, really. Thank God. This is about not getting, you're not being in. It's not another way of escaping successfully. Because I don't think if there was a way to escape successfully, there wouldn't be so many ways to escape successfully. There would have been one way to escape successfully and it would be done. But obviously, it doesn't look like we can get out of we. Yeah, the self can get out of self. So let's just stop barking up that tree and maybe looking, am I that which I love to get out of? 
Yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. Maybe you won't want to want to get out of it anymore and you'll realize you're not in it. Yeah. And there's a, there's a freedom there. That's not like a freedom after like heavy, heavy bondage. It's a freedom before freedom and bondage. Yes. It's a different beast altogether. Yeah. It's sort of like the feeling of abstinence that I, I sense. I don't have a thought or a feeling about drinking or using pretty much ever. Yeah, I could care less. That's an incredible solution for someone who was like the ex- the exhibiting of a knee jerk reaction to every mental urge that was caused by this obsession. Yeah, to have that to be completely removed a day at a time, the problem not existing as me anymore is incredible. Yeah, and to me. This knowledge that we're sharing is all just reverse engineering. It comes from relief from the bondage of self. It's not putting out a hope. Now, maybe there's a bondage of self going on now, and maybe hope is the appropriate thing. I'm not holding this as a hopeful message. I'm living this message. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I have a relief from something that was fucking pretty damn heavy all day. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest obstacle is it not seeming possible, really. Yeah. <clears throat> The pro- it's really funny, we talk about the faith. The faith in the problem tells you, constantly informs you how impossible it's going to be to escape it. <laughs> There's no need to escape it. You realize you're not in it. That's the point, yes? The wisdom of no escape is there's no need to escape. You're not in it in the first place. You're not of self. See, it says the bondage of self. The freedom is of spirit. Yeah. The bondage is of self. Freedom is of spirit. I would say we are of spirit. Yeah. Therefore, freedom is available. We are not of self. Therefore, the possibility of being free from bondage is available. But the bondage is of self. Self and bondage are synonymous, yes? So self can't be free from the bondage of self because it is the the quality of bondage, yes? The bondage is of self. (laughs) It can't have one without the other, so to speak. Self unbound (laughs) is not available. (laughs) When self is unbound, there's something bound to self, which is us. (laughs) We've lived a life with unbound self, haven't we? Any life run on self will can hardly be a success. I would say that was unbound self. How did that go? (laughs) <laughs> Was there a lot of freedom there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> freedom of spirit from the bondage of self. Yes. The f- one of the product lines of spirit is freedom. One of the product lines of self is bondage. <laughs> you can't have... The, pro- the one who's producing the products without the products, yeah? So self, the bondage of self, yeah? <laughs> it doesn't say the bondage of spirit, does it? No. That's how they used to, people used to name themselves. Remember in the old days, they would be John of Middletown, Yes. So John came from Middletown. So he would say, my name is John of Middletown. I come from Middletown. So bondage comes from self. 
the bondage of self. Yes? Yeah. You don't have to get rid of John. You just got to see you're not from Middletown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a new address. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat> thanks, Paul. Um, it's hard to feel bad reading that, just, that, that um, those paragraphs, does it? It sort of doesn't it bring you a light, a certain lightness. You just read it. Wow, yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds familiar. familiar. Right, yeah. Um, I don't know. There's, there's so many different fellowships, and usually people, well, not usually, but I've tended to once the alcohol was put down, go from that to you know, it, it seems to hide in different places. The, the obsession kind of thing. And often yeah. there's a lot of denial around that as well. That's so. My idea is what. Well, so there's yeah. no freedom until self is given completely. But often there's so much denial there that you can't really see where it's hiding anymore. And uh, but no, maybe no, the, the freedom doesn't need complete obliteration of self. The freedom is based that there isn't one. Yes, to right. begin with. Right. So. There'll be plenty of demonstrations while you feel like you're in the bondage of self of being free from it. You'll get a lot of free samples. Yeah. Mm. What the hopes is okay. going to finally lead you to denying its story of your origin, that you come from self, which you don't. Or you come as self, which you don't. Yes. So yeah. the basically what shifts is your origin story, really. Yeah. Now you have a vague origin based on I don't know, instead of this whole historical story about you and this and that and do ba 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 ba, which is just a rebranding of the self. Yeah. So this is why you can see if you have little plans and designs, they're different than big plans and designs, aren't they? Everyone has plans and designs. But you'll travel lighter if they're held as little plans and designs in, if, if, uh, instead of big plans and designs. And what self does is makes every, make every plan and design seem to be very big, yes? So now you become overly important and outsized, yeah? You're distorted. You're looking as if when you look at yourself, you see yourself in one of those funny house mirrors. Yeah, you're distorted. It's all about you. And so now everything is a big plan and design. Every thought's a big thought. <coughs> Every, <coughs> excuse me. Every feeling of discomfort is a huge fucking oppression. Yes. The self is myopic. It makes you really big, and it makes other th and then it makes other things really big when it's used to make you really big. Yes, it's like playing around with proportion and shit. So you're walking around, <laughs> just like with this oversized head. No hat could fill it. No hat can cover it. You're just walking around like with those like those dogs with mange, like a little satellite dish, and you're just K-Paul all day. Yes? Jesus Christ. So your whole day, one way or the other, is you're trying to get out of something all day. You don't see that as the biggest in? This urge to constantly want to get out of something is the biggest in self experience. It is. The biggest experience of self is trying to get out of it, mostly. Yeah. And some of us would do almost anything for a little bit of relief from it. We would pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel this bondage of self right now. Yeah. But always rooted in it through the identification as it. That's the root of the problem. We take ourselves... It's sort of like being addicted to a drug to such a point 
that you're now the drug trying to stop taking the drug. Yeah? The head has gone so far in its addiction to this idea of self, it takes itself to be self. And so now itself is trying to get out of self by doing drugs and this and yoga and everything like that. And all the attempts to get out are reinforcing we're in because we're trying to get out of self as self. We're identified as it, yeah? We're caught in this conundrum. We can't not try to get out of it. It's uncomfortable. It's driving me crazy, shit like that. But every time we get out of it, we're reinforcing that the idea that we're in it. When does it stop? A recognition of that, a recognition of the incredible observation in our community, self cannot get out of self. So something stops, yes? Something freaking stops. And instead of using the machinery to try to stop the machinery, there's a pause of the machinery and you see it. You see what you're not, you see it, yeah? And you're fucking, and you're sincerely willing to have it change. And then the grace appears, you get introduced to recovery, and suddenly you're sincerely, you're now established in that position. You are not in the hope of losing interest in self, you're losing interest in self. Yeah? You're in the process of recovery already. It's not going to be a future. You're in the process of losing interest in self. Things are being downsized. Yes? Your big decisions don't seem so big and important. And now you start traveling lighter. And now you, your head comes out of your ass and you can see how you can be of use. And then life puts you to use. Yes? And it just re just regenerates itself. It's beautiful. I need to hear the message. You need to carry it. You need to hear the message. I need to carry it. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And yet the message is you're not of self. That origin story is a fabrication. It is. Your resonance is way before a physical location. Yeah, you're of spirit. Once that gets clear, more clarity follows, yes? You can try to become clear about it. You can be a professor of trees and miss the whole forest, you can. This is about seeing the forest from the trees not trying to see the, you know, see the, uh, <laughs> you know, using the trees to try to see the forest. You see the forest from the trees, yeah? You see the bigger picture. And now you proceed from that step. And that step is solid, yes? And each step you is based on that direction is clear direction. It's good orderly direction. Yeah. The, the correction is at the beginning, not in the middle or the end. It's at the beginning point. What you thought was true and is true is not true. What you're feeling is true and sensing is true is true. You're now being directed by something that's prior to thought. Yeah. Not a thought system that's insane, but something prior to thought. We call it intuitive thought or feeling energy, whatever. But now what's pulsing in your life and giving you direction is not manufactured and made up in the head. Yeah. You're rooted in the here and now because it's the only thing you can feel, taste, touch, smell and see. There's no fucking esoteric spiritual mumbo jumbo. It's just obvious. You're here now. You've never not been here now. And there's actually nothing that is not here now. Yeah. All your ideas of there and then are here and now. 
you never think about next week in next week. You think about it now. You never go over resentment of 20 years ago. On, you go over it now. Yeah? We're using, with the, with the bondage of self, we're being driven by echoes that have been interpreted. Yeah? In such a fucking skewed way, we have no idea actually what happened. We've got Mount Rushmore's in fucking Connecticut. Yes, it's just all, it's all misplaced. It's all being used to support a narrative at the expense of us living our life. Yeah, you want to have that slavery far out. Yes, you want to have all the hopes and and the desires coming from that. Great. I'm. You know, you're going to learn one way or the other. It's going to fail you. Yeah. Because it already has. Therefore, it always will. Yes. So this is, uh, this is truly, perhaps there is a better way. I mean, the whole way. And the way isn't so much it's more set in a direction. Yeah. And the direction isn't going towards anything. It's moving away from something, which is this origin story of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Okay, great. Um, we did have a hand up. I think it was Lisa. If you want to come in, then feel free to, Lisa. If not, are there any more hands? I think Lisa left. Uh, uh, Lisa. Good. Lisa's gone. Success. That's all we're offering, yes? We're offering uh, a possibility of Paul of what? Yes, the bondage of self or the freedom of spirit, yes? Mm. Oliver, do you want to come in? Hello. Hi. Yes. Ah, muted. Hello, everyone. Hello, Paul. So uh, good to be here. And I got a question about uh, what my sponsor told me a couple of a uh, couple of days ago on our last meeting. I'm pretty happy that I have this sponsor. I have to say, and uh, we're talking about we're we're on step four, and we're doing this resentment list, and we're talking about it, and. Uh, I happen to be mentioning, you know, uh, acknowledging these resentments, but uh, sort of uh, not identifying, not claiming them, right? And yeah, um, yeah uh, we kind of agreed on a term spiritual bypassing as something that it's really not a bad thing, you know, but uh, he also yeah. mentioned the processing, processing of those emotions. So uh, it's not that we sort of um, uh, put it that way, you know, processing emotions uh, versus spiritual bypassing. It's, uh, but we kind of, you know, just started some sort of topic that we're probably going to, you know, uh, carry on with next time. And uh, uh, it, uh, uh, for me, spiritual bypassing, if, if, any occurred uh, can only make you know processing of emotions uh, that are for instance in connection with uh, those resentments can, can make them uh, seemingly uh, easier to see to, uh, and um, sort of just uh, go through that right rather than <clears throat> uh, being in the identifications and claiming the yeah the very, you know, uh, 
resentments or fears or whatever there is there in connection. And uh, but I was just wondering, you know, is is you know, is I got intrigued with the very because I wasn't thinking about it earlier, but processing the emotions that are there that are you know seem seemingly are you know uh, current and uh, kind of they're felt uh, so uh, or perceived. Uh, so um, the thing is, um, my question is, you know. Uh, does actually in your your <clears throat> experience uh, process uh, you know during six and seven does something like processing emotions act, uh, happens then or is it something different? Well, it ha- yeah, it happens all the time in a way. <clears throat> yeah. So especially if like emotion is sort of like amber with something uh, captured in it. Yeah. So there was an emotional reaction to the resentment or the anxiety. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if it's like amber with a bug in it. There's some prehistoric something. And uh, life, I feel, without much prodding is going to allow a recapitulation of that stuff, like they say in shamanism. Uh, You'll see by actually having different experiences in a similar event. So let's let's say like relationships, yeah? So relationship, uh, a lot of the dilemmas in in significant relationships was an inability to have a relationship with a person, (laughs) yeah, at the beginning. And therefore there was a lot of emotions stuffed up in all that. And so as you go on, you meet someone and now you start having a actually a relationship with that person and you've been brought out of seeing them as her and seeing you as me and now you see it as us and now the emotions that were let's say codified around relationships get turned back into a living river now because you're in a relationship that's working And now you get a sense of how it could have been by it being this new way. So it's almost like a recapturing of that frozen process caught in these old events. Yeah. So I see that as I don't believe I have to launch onto a process to recapture or recapitulate emotion. I think life will do it. (laughs) <laughs> in the program of living i do yeah mm-hmm. and then you just have the eyes to see it and take the cues so i feel a lot of what we go through when we come to terms with the past is a lot of the frozen shit that got frozen in all those stunted emotions and stuff the life in that gets reclaimed yeah and now gets it it's like the the captured water gets free to to flow. Yeah, so that's how I feel. Now, maybe people want to go it through a process, and but that's not how it worked with me. <clears throat> with me, life uh, kept bringing me invitations to look at shit. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't calling up to have those things lined up. They would just fi- find me. And I keep getting an invitation to have old shit reclaimed, yeah? And then it would happen sooner or later, and then there was like a moving on, yeah, yeah. So, but if someone wants to look at at it and go through a more formalized way, um, uh, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's just that's not how it happened with me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in other words, there was, in a certain condition I found, I ended up in, I was pretty much uh, avoiding most stuff, like most growth at all, (laughs) yeah? I just didn't want to have any of that shit. Then I got back into life and life kept bringing me invitations that sometimes I saw as a curse until I finally uh, restarted you know, took the invitation up and then a lot of old shit got undone in a new event. Yes. 
which is how I really feel. I don't feel going back into the past undoes the past. I think things changing now undoes the past. Yeah. So I don't go looking for like, uh, like uh, artifacts of my life. The imprint or the or the pattern of that repatterns in a, 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 a contemporary event. Yes. And then there's a, a whole like link of reclaiming of all those situations that were a concerning, let's say, relationship. Yeah. So the relationship I'm in now has been a huge reclamation of past relationships. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That, so that's that, how that I sounds, see it. Yeah. yeah. Very inspiring, I have to say. Yeah. And so it's, the whole thing is more, you know, more broad. Uh, it's broader than six and seven, in a, in a sense. The, you know, the the. the oh yeah, yeah. Well, you get imitations of life, and then you learn you can face life successfully. Where in your head you came to a conclusion you couldn't, so you just avoided a lot of things about life. But now. I feel love is persistent in recovery. Love will just keep demanding itself from you. And uh, it's just better to go along with it because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's going to keep on knocking, I feel. And so uh, things I tried to avoid, I finally gave in and gave up, and then they got undone and changed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the past doesn't get changed by the past, obviously. It gets changed in the present, yes? That's where everything occurs. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I don't see any more hands, so. Um. What do you want to do, Paul? Do you want to yeah. say goodbyes or another? Yeah, we can or... say goodbye today. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We can get off early. I uh, the funny thing is, I <laughs> this is the beauty of life, really. So I'm walking around oblivious to the fact that I had bought a ticket to Mexico for Amelia and I that was supposed to leave tomorrow. <laughs> So completely forgot that we weren't going to do it because we got ill and shit. And so both of us are sitting at the kitchen table, oblivious to this. And then a download just came into Amelia and she said, what about that trip to Mexico? And I looked and it's tomorrow. And then I spent the morning trying to change it and everything instead of just losing the thousand dollars. <laughs> So it was funny. I would have lost the thousand dollars without ever knowing I lost the thousand dollars until I found out later somehow because I completely forgotten this trip. So I feel sometimes that's like life. Life just uh, reveals to me shit I've completely forgotten. So because it would never have come up. It wasn't coming up. I wasn't trying to coax it or remember anything. I had no idea there was a planned trip to Mexico. No, it was like, it was a collective amnesia Amelia and I had, and then it was broken through. I see that as a beautiful sign, you know? Yeah, so there was no thought involved. Bing, all right, got to get on the phone. Huge, huge penalty to change it and whatever, you know, it's just the way life goes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it could have come up tomorrow and then it would have been the money all would have been gone. You know, but it was nice that it came up now. I only have a few hours before it would have been canceled and uh, I can deal with it now. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. That's something else is doing for me what I can't do for myself. <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, don't you have the demonstrations galore? 
Why not have the fun of honoring it? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to have gratitude. It's nice. It's a nice feeling as an action figure. Yeah. Why using drugs and alcohol bereft me of feelings for quite a while? Really, I was numb to life. I didn't know how I could enjoy it. And then the first year it was funny. I had no idea I had an incredible uh, condition of, of staph, a staph infection inside my body. A huge colony of staph was living on a rod that was in my upper thigh, my left thigh, without me knowing. So when I got sober, life seemed to be pretty bleak. <laughs> because I was pretty much dying from a staph infection without knowing it. <laughs> so I had a lot of shit that was going to be revealed to me the first year. I mean, seriously, shit I had seemingly avoided successfully all came a knocking. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So I didn't have a memory of what it was like when I hadn't been using because I've been using since I was 13 or something. So I figured, is this sobriety? This sort of sucks. I feel, feel terrible. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I had a fever all the time because I did and uh, had no idea until I did that you've got a giant staff colony living in your body. It's amazing you're fucking alive. <laughs> they rushed me to the hospital and operated on me that day. Yeah, it was a trip. So I'm telling you, you cannot believe how out to lunch you are in the bondage of self. I mean, you're in, you're way out on an outpost getting very old news all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing just to get into the vicinity of living, you know, just to be here. Yeah. So thanks. Hey, let me say goodbye to everybody. Michael Stacy, thank you for all the service. Yes. You're such a solid character. Uh, I could see just a picture of you and it would bring me to life. It's good. Very nice. Kerry, always a pleasure to see Mr. Kerry. A solid character, if there is one. Walter, the brother from another mother. Jacob, on the way, yes? Learning how to face life successfully. Yeah, fantastic. Matt, a pleasure to travel with you, to see you in Italy. It was great. Very uh, Likewise, Paul. Thank you. Yes. We got James Lebowski. Yes. Anything that reminds me the, of the big Lebowski makes is happy. It's a, yes, I always like him writing the 69 cent check for the half and half. <laughs> All right, we got John in Florida. Nice to see you, John. Nanette, always smiling with the candle. Thank you, Nanette. You, you light my way, honey. That's very nice of you. So we got Rob, nice to see you, Rob. We got uh, Gail, my little pink cloud resident. We got Oliver from Berlin, Alex, Hudson Valley, Rich, Jesse, uh, Ron, I think it is, you can see. Let's see, we got uh, Hallie, nice to see her. Ben, thank you for the service, Ben, today. Uh, Ra Roman, always a pleasure, Roman. It's a pleasure hanging out with Roman and Barbara. Chris, unfortunately, something else hung out with us, but that's okay. It's over, hopefully. Uh, we've got, I think that's it, Amy from Seattle. Uh, it's a pleasure, very nice meeting today. Uh, yes, carry on. We'll see each other soon. We'll be here Saturday live and Zoom at one o'clock Pacific time. And everything's on the website. The 4.30 Pacific time Tuesday is now gonna be through our Zoom, not awakening together. So just go to the website, the entrance will be there. All right, thanks everyone, see you.